the adults only TRS Yucatan has a couple of things that it does need to work on. But overall, it was a very pleasant surprise of a stay, and the food was borderline out of this world good. Join me today for the full tour. Welcome to the Riviera Maya. Before we get into it, let me welcome you to the channel if you're new here. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I am here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket and the price that I paid is in the description below, as always. TRS Hotels had no knowledge that I'd be filming today and I didn't receive any compensation from them. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my unique experience. The rest, I'll let it speak for itself. Let's get started. We're heading south today, to the furthest point south on this trip in fact. The TRS, technically speaking, is within Playa del Carmen's jurisdiction, but in reality it's smack in the middle of Playa and Tulum, on a gorgeous stretch of coastline. As we head inside the gates, let me explain the lay of the land a bit to help you understand what this hotel actually is. TRS is one of the luxury brands of the Palladium Hotel Group, which is based in Spain. The group began in the 60s in Ibiza and has around 50 hotels, of which five are TRSs. TRSs are adults only, and in the case of today's report, it fills a niche within a much larger resort complex. To many of the viewers who I presume will watch this, TRS is likely not a very familiar brand, and it wasn't for me either. The best way that I can describe this one specifically is a mix between a newer JW Marriott, a Kimpton, and a Malia. There are a lot of traditional big box design elements throughout the property, but they mostly feel premium. That's the JW part. The Kimpton part, I think, is what they're going for in terms of crowd and forward-thinking design. Open spaces when possible, breezy designs, focus on food, and finally, Malia represents the starkness that you'll often find at Spanish hotel chains, but with a touch of glam. I, I know that was a bit of a weird comparison, and it took me way too long to come up with, but I do think it's pretty accurate. As we head inside, let's see if I can not confuse you anymore. As we look around the lobby area, I'll explain the first impressions that I had. The check-in experience is one that went from fantastic to good, to for the love of God, very quickly. This will sound a bit odd, but I think this is a hotel that does gimmicky stuff really well. I don't think I've ever said that, let alone had that thought before. When you arrive, you'll be escorted over to the check-in desk. You'll be offered a glass of kava, and you'll be given a baseball cap as well, for men at least. And you choose between black or white. While going through the check-in details, your booking agent will poignantly be called out if there were any VIP perks attached to your booking, which they'll reconfirm in detail. You'll also be given a book of vouchers or coupons of the sort, which has a supposed value of over $1,000 that can be used throughout the resort complex. I arrived around 1.30, the room wasn't ready yet, and I got the feeling that this is one of those hotels that simply just follows the rules. The check-in time is 3 o'clock, and so your room will be ready at 3 o'clock. Fair enough. I went to have lunch while waiting near the coastline, which was quite a distance. At 2.55, I got an email saying that the room was ready. Fantastic. I had my bags with me and asked for a buggy. There were tons of buggies, but they were full, and it took a solid 20 minutes. I got to the lobby, got my key, and got in line for another buggy to take me to my room, which was another 15 minutes got in the buggy with three other rooms, and we waited as the other guests were dropped off and the driver carried all of their bags up the stairs to their rooms. I'd say another 20 solid minutes. If they're going to be by the book, that's fine, but they need to be able to handle that rush of guests, which they simply were not able to. Before we head to the pools and beach, Let's take a look at where we are, and I can better show you how the resort is laid out. It's not necessarily straightforward. For reference, Cancun and its hotel zone are up here, and this is the lay of the land. 
Today, we're going to focus all the way down here across from Cozumel. Within the Riviera Maya, the TRS is just about as isolated as it gets simply because it is equidistant, driving times wise, between the airport in Cancun and the new airport in Tulum. Both are around an hour and 20 minutes away in absolute opposite directions. Here we can see our TRS with its 454 rooms, specifically this area here. The hotel opened as this brand in 2017, having been renovated as part of the massive Palladium Resort Complex, which you can see here. Among these resorts, four or five of them in total, TRS is the most premium, is the only adults only, and is the only resort which gives you access to the entire complex. What does that mean? Well, for starters, it means that there's no way on earth that you're going to see all the restaurants and bars today because there are 35 of them spread across the property. 12 of those, 6 restaurants and 6 bars are here at TRS. This is the most centrally located pool on the property, and this is basically the activity pool. If it doesn't seem all that impressive, have no fear, much better is coming. This is basically just the party pool and has a bar on site. Driving towards the beach, you'll pass by most of the villas of rooms. All of the rooms are split between 13 of them. Keep going and eventually you'll reach the gorgeous coastline. The TRS has a massive seaside pool and another saltwater pool with lots of seating around both. But this corner of the property does not have a sandy beach. But you can take a buggy or walk to the heart of the complex where there is a beach if you'd like. But that area is not adults only. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. There's a very Crete meets Ibiza meets Mexico vibe with all of the design around the pool area. This, the largest pool, has two bars serving it as well as the Helios restaurant, which we'll see in a little bit. Let me talk about the all-inclusive nature of the resort. This is a much more European-style all-inclusive, where the real focus is on the food and not the booze. Alcohol of all kinds is included, but you're not going to have 26 types of vodka to choose from at every bar. If you saw my Ibiza resort reviews, the food style reminds me a lot of the Ibirostar and the Barcelona Portanax. And just like them as well, the included drinks are unlimited, but the focus is on the basics, plus bottles of wine at dinner which are chargeable. But there are of course house wines included as well. If at home you tend to order cocktails without specifying your brand of spirit, or are just happy with a beer of any name in your hand, then you'll, you'll be happy here. As we continue walking along the coast, we come up to the rock pool. Now, I know for many, not having their own beach right here is a deal breaker, and perhaps they already tuned out. That's fine. But for many, the coast and ocean views are enough. But given the fact that there's no beach, I do think a saltwater pool like this is absolutely the next best thing. As we head to Helios for lunch, let me explain how all of the menus and just about everything here works. You will need to download the Palladium app. Connect your reservation, it's easy, and then it's all customized for you. You can see all of the menus, make reservations, look at the resort map which is interactive, it just all actually works. I generally don't like it when a resort forces you into their app, but at least this one is done really well and luckily for me, it still works for my past reservation. Most of the restaurants will still have a paper menu to offer you if you prefer, and each venue has many dietary icons on the menu so you know exactly what fits for you. Inside Helios, it's a bright and open indoor and outdoor space, and this was the moment that I realized the food here was a little bit different. 
As I sat down, I was given a menu and told there's an a la carte menu as well as a buffet. Originally, I was about to order from the menu, not realizing that it was like a full, full buffet. I thought it was, you know, one of those small supplemental buffets. So let's take a look. I have never seen so many individual portions on one buffet before, but it's done really well. Again, the gimmicky thing here fits. There were live stations for a bunch of things, from tacos to build your own burgers to fresh rolled sushi, and then just a boatload of other options as well. The tacos I had were delicious, and everything was appropriately hot and just really good quality. Behind the pool, there's also a grill stand that has salads, sandwiches, pizzas, and wraps. Alright, now we're gonna head to my room, but first we're going to explore one of the more unique design elements here, the elevated mangrove walkways. Think of the layout of the resort as a big ring road, and these are essentially massive shortcuts to get you from one side of the resort to the other much quicker and are used by everyone. Eventually it opens up to the lagoon, which is just behind the lobby area. That cottage there on the left, just keep that one in mind for a bit. That was originally my first room. I booked what they refer to as a romance bungalow. Among all the hotels that I was staying at on this trip, this simply seemed like the most unique room, and well, unique it certainly was. You walk in through the bar area into a round bedroom with your bathtub and table and chairs. Before we get into the extra bits, let's talk about the things that I did not like here first. First up is a biggie, and is just on that borderline of careless and unacceptable, and that was cleanliness. From permanent makeup stains on the sheets, to a couple of hairs here and there, it was certainly not the worst I've ever seen, but certainly was not the best. By chance, the cottage that you saw over the water earlier was my original dirty room. I likely would have stayed and just asked them to clean the room again, but because the room was on full display, especially the bathroom, I asked to change rooms and kill two birds with one stone. Second thing I didn't like was the underperforming air conditioning specifically because the bathroom, which you'll see, is big. It has tall ceilings and doesn't have AC, so it sucks all that cool air from the bedroom. I'll put the extra bits up now. Third thing I didn't like were the pillows, which were lumpy to a comical level. These were real feather pillows. I don't use feather pillows. I don't know how to maintain them, but every single one of these had feathers all clumped into balls which made these the lumpiest pillows that I've ever 
encountered. As for the things I did like, first off, the welcome amenities and really fully stocked mini bar and bar area with Nespresso and drip coffee. I don't think I've ever seen that before together. Second, we have the unique design in general and the outdoor space. As I've said many times before, personally, my personal taste, I prefer simple rooms or really unique rooms, and this definitely ticks the latter. Last up was the butler. So everyone at TRS gets a butler, and I can say they truly work their asses off. My butler arrived to my first room five minutes after I did while I was trying to call reception, but it was just constantly busy. Between that, the dirty room, and the weird view, he made what could have turned into a really frustrating situation ten times better and simply handled everything himself. Twenty minutes later, I was in a new room, which was much cleaner, though I'd say overall housekeeping could still use a brush up in training. He was also insistent on him running back to the other room to get the welcome amenities. The butlers work from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily and will arrange anything you need if you don't want to do it through the app. He made my dinner reservation for me, and like two minutes before I was ready to walk out the door to dinner, actually knocked on my door and walked me over to the restaurant. I'm not sure if I got a really good butler, or if they have so many of them, or what, but it's one program the hotel is doing really well. Here you can see the lovely view that I had from the original room. Really odd to have such low countertops. It was at my knee level. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces, like links to playlists about my other Mexican resorts. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. Here, we can see how much more private the outdoor space is with its own canoe and hammock to boot. Okay, let's head to dinner. As I mentioned, the food program is much more European, and in that, many of the bars are integrated into the restaurants. There are some beach and pool bars like this, but generally, in each restaurant, there was one large and very popular bar, which everyone would arrive at well before the reservations for a few drinks. For dinner that night, I chose the steakhouse, El Gaucho, on the recommendation of my butler. I know when I like something and I'm telling you about it, a lot of people think that I'm talking in hyperbole. But I'm honestly not when I'm talking about the best that I had or something like that. And so in this case, I'm racking my brain to think of a more impressive and delicious all-inclusive meal that I've ever had. I don't think there was one. I, I, I'm talking about ever. Have a look at the menu. We started out with a really good loaf of freshly baked bread with a trio of chimichurris. Right after this, it caught me off guard and I forgot to film it, but a selection of steak knives were brought to the table for me to choose from. You could choose Japanese, German, American, or Mexican brands. The only brand that I recognized was Global, but it was just a really nice, unexpected, and sure, unnecessary touch. Again, good gimmicky. Making the mundane a bit more special. Talking about special, when was the last time your provoleta was brought to the table? Boiling. 
That was the most incredible provoletta I've ever had. This one topped with lardons and caramelized onion. To this day, I can't really believe that I finished it. Next up was a spinach and goat's cheese salad, which was also just really good and perfectly dressed. Last up for the main event, I had the strip steak with spinach and mashed potatoes. Really good mashed potatoes. The steak was two temperature, full of charcoal flavor, and definitely a premium steakhouse quality. Last up was a lemon pie, which was good, but I only had a bite because, well, you already saw what I ate. For those exact same dishes, I wouldn't flinch at paying 80 to to $100 for them in quite a few major cities. Here was my semi-effective way to keep the bedroom cooler. It was a beautiful sunrise on the coast, and one other thing that I forgot to show you previously were the cabanas, which you can reserve ahead of time and are chargeable. Okay, time for breakfast. You could go anywhere in the resort you'd like to for breakfast, but at TRS, breakfast is served at Helios, where we had lunch, or at Capriccio. The restaurant is nicely decorated and had really attentive servers. There was an a la carte menu for breakfast, as well as a full buffet. This restaurant is also open for lunch and dinner with a small a la carte menu and buffet. Again, the same style of a lot of small portions and all in different stations. They won me over on this table right here. And for a resort, which I've said didn't have a ton of alcohol focus, that surely wasn't the case in the mornings with full Mimosa, Bellini, and Bloody Mary stations set up. Within TRS, there are also two other restaurants. One is La Boheme, which is their French restaurant, as well as Chic, which is a kind of dinner and a show, and I've heard up to three hours long. For TRS guests, the food is technically free, but there is a reservation fee for Chic. If you've stayed here before, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts about the food and the other restaurants that you tried. Especially with all-inclusive resorts, there's only so many of the venues that I can pack into one video, and I'm sure others researching this video in the future will appreciate another viewer's take. From the a la carte menu, I had the Montaleño eggs, which were really good, but I have no idea why there was ham and peas on top. Here you can see a sample of the resort's activity calendar, which is constantly updated in the app. So this is a bit of a mixed bag of a resort, which I mostly remember quite fondly. The service is from good to great, but at times they're simply understaffed, especially buggy drivers. The lounge and the pool areas are gorgeous, but there's no beach at this part of the resort. The rooms are unique and there's a bunch of different styles, but cleanliness is an issue. 
As for the food though, that was a total game changer win in my book and is what earned them the top spot in the overall food rankings. And that'll do it for today. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on board Swiss International Airlines from London Heathrow to Geneva in business class. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.